Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in The Last of Us Part 2. We're going to start by optimizing Windows. After that, we're going to take a look on your Radeon or Nvidia parameter. And at the end, we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D. They're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture. Capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode honestly is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now, honestly, just use balance. You will have better boost clock, longer boost clock. Uh, I did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance, and honestly, I'm getting better result with balance. So super important to do that. Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now let's go to the NVIDIA app. The first thing that I want to recommend, uh, I'm not a huge fan, honestly, of the um overlay so nvidia overlay i really recommend to deactivate this one sometimes it's causing issue like stuttering you're losing some fps with it so i really recommend to deactivate it also we're gonna go to the control panel i'm gonna show you some optimization that you can do so we're gonna go to the manage 3d setting first so the first thing that you should definitely activate it is your low latency mode make sure this one is at on Another thing that I recommend is your power management mode. This one, pretty much the same thing than the, the, the one from Windows. Make sure that you're using normal. Don't use the maximum performance. I'm getting also better boost clock, more FPS with it. And the last one is your shader cache size. By default, your cache will be a driver default like this. And normally it's 4 gig. Uh, I recommend to start with 10 if you don't have a lot of space on, on your computer. And if you have a lot of space, go with 100 gig. Honestly, it's a game changer for your cache size. Uh, you're going to struggle less with stuttering and also that your game need to recompile and stuff like that. If you install a lot of game, uh, this one can be very good for you. Now let's go to change resolution. The last one, really important to make sure that first of all, that you're selecting the uh, monitor, uh, that uh, first of all, you're using the native resolution of your monitor and also super important to have a proper refresh rate over there. Uh, by default, sometimes when you just change your monitor, it will be at 60 Hertz. Uh, so depending on the type of monitor that you buy, 144, 240, make sure that you're selecting this one. This option also, you can change it on Windows or your Radeon driver if you have a Radeon car. So no problem with that. The last one is your G-Sync. If you want to activate your G-Sync, really important to select the monitor. It needs to be compatible and you will enable over there. Uh, I'm not using G-Sync me. I always unlock my FPS because I want the lowest input lag. But if you don't like those steering line, definitely activate your G-Sync over there. This is pretty much it for the NVIDIA parameter. Now let's go to the Radeon one. So now for Radeon card, we're going to go to settings display first. Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. 
After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile, so don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, fluent motion frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game, but this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one. This one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be... 100% uh, utilization for me, so you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer, but sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed, just go to Assassin's Creed, and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging. But uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty. So this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver. And I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort. So you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now the settings. I'm going to show you a lot of different parameter and over there for Radeon and also for NVIDIA. So it really depends on your goal. So do you need like 60 FPS, 120? Do you need more in image quality because you want to be immersed in the game or you just want pure performance? So I'm going to show you everything you will need to make after that some decision. Window mode, this one, make sure that you're playing full screen to have like to optimize your FPS and less input lag. Make sure display resolution is your native. In my case, it's 1440p. I lock my FPS at 237. Uh, I'm going to show you why. So for an example, right now, my refresh rate is 240 Hertz. I'm using G-Sync. If I run 241 FPS and more, I'm going to lose all the benefit of G-Sync. So that's why I always recommend to cap your FPS 3 FPS less than your maximum refresh rate. So for an example, if you have a 144 Hertz monitor, lock your FPS at 141. I'm not using V-Sync because I'm using G-Sync. And also it will be locked if you're using frame generation. You can't use it. So after that, if you have an NVIDIA card, make sure that your low latency is at on. You will see that your DLA LA will be locked when using the LSS and your frame gen over there. Now, I want to show you something. Uh, by default, you're using the LSS 3 in this game. And I really recommend to use the LSS 4. So go to your NVIDIA app. 
you will see that you have the Last of Us uh, Part 2 remaster. So in the DLSS override model preset, make sure that you're using the latest one over there. I can apply now because it's already there. So you're going to force to use uh, the LSS 4. And also uh, for uh, the super resolution, right now in the game, you have quality, balance, performance, and ultra performance. For the people who just want pure image quality, you can force DLLA with input resolution at 100%, you apply, and you're gonna make sure that you use, you're gonna use the LLE inside of the game, but you're gonna lose 10 to 15% FPS using that, but you will have a crazy image quality if you wanna do this. Now let's go back in the game. So I'm gonna start with those Nvidia owner with an RTX card. Uh, so first of all, Frame generation, DLSS is it's available, 40% boost in your FPS. You will need an RTX card 4000 series or more recent to use that. After that, I recommend to use DLSS at quality. You're going to gain 10 to 12% boost in your FPS. And honestly, quality mode with DLSS 4 is amazing. So I really recommend to use that. And for your sharpness, I, it's a question of preference. I like to play at 5. Honestly, if the, the game is too blurry, go higher. And if it looks too much like a, uh, an Instagram filter, go lower. Now, if you have an NVIDIA card, RTX card again, 3000 series, 2000 series, my recommendation is use FSR frame generation. It will work for your video card. You're going to get your 35 to 40% boost in your FPS. But still use the LSS because it's better than FSR. So push the LSS with quality mode and you will be all set. If you have a Radiant car or whatever card that you have, make sure that you're using FSR 3.1. Uh, it's not the fourth one. It's not available right now. Use FSR frame generation and same thing, use quality. So three different setup for different um, video card uh, generation that you have. So this is pretty much it. So I'm going to go back with my DLSS like this. Bang, bang, bang. So we're good over there. So now let's go to the quality settings. So quality setting, uh, something that it's cool in the game, you can use the drop down if you want to modify individually some parameter, but I will keep it simple, honestly. First of all, level of detail, I really recommend to go with medium. This one will tank your FPS like crazy. For each bracket, it's like four to five percent difference. So my recommendation is go with medium. And uh, again, really depend on what is your goal. If with frame generation and DLSS, you have too much FPS, just go higher with this one. Texture quality and texture filtering go very high in 16x, but it really depends on the amount of VRAM that you have on your GPU. So if you have 8 gig and more VRAM, go like this. 6 gig, go like this. 4 gig, like this. And less than 4 gig, go low 2x. Let's go back there. Shadow quality, I recommend to go with I. Uh, if you're struggling with your FPS, this one and screen space shadow, definitely go with medium. You're going to get another 7% boost. But I is a good balance between image quality in this game and FPS. Image based lightning, I recommend to go with on. Bounce lightning, go with off. This one tank your FPS like crazy. Ambient occlusion, I recommend to go with quality. Screen space reflection, go with I. Real time reflection quality, this one is crazy, man. Uh, Go with medium for the base. Again, it depends on your goal. And if you're tanking like crazy when you see reflection, go low or even just disactivate it. Real-time cloud. This one, you can activate it without an issue. Screen space, go with on. Refraction quality, you can use very easily. After that, those settings are more a uh, question of preference. I'm not a fan of depth of field, so I always disactivate this in any game. Motion blur, again, same thing. Uh, you're too, too much blurriness, honestly, in this game. So that's why I just disactivate this. Same thing with Bloom. Particle density and volumetric effect quality. Those one, it's like 3% or 3 to 4% for each bracket. Start with medium. And if you're still struggling with your FPS when you see explosion and stuff like that, lower the particle density. I'm not a huge fan of lowering uh, volumetric effect quality uh, uh, under medium. You're going to lose too much uh, image quality with this one. So go with this. Lens flare, go with alpha resolution. After that, again, question of preference. Camera shake, I always disactivate it. I don't like this effect. And I don't like the film grain intensity in the game. So I remove this effect also. And this is pretty much it for my The Last of Us 2 part. Uh, part two sorry guide on pc if you have any questions just comment in the youtube section post me your rig cpu gpu and ram i will try to help you the best that i can and don't forget to subscribe to the channel